Guys, today we are going to be adding one of my absolute favorite lands in the game to our binder challenge. Let's take a look. Guys, welcome to the next edition of our binder collection challenge. If you guys don't know what this series is, essentially what we have decided to do is pick up a 480 card binder. We're filling it out page by page every single week and then going through the 12 cards that we've added along with the value of the binder and a completion total. Now, over the last few weeks, we have seen some of the most amazing cards added to the binder. We've gotten some promos, some reserve list stuff, just some really cool collectible cards. And we have no shortage of that this week as well. Now, as always, guys, I encourage you as we are going through some of the cards that we have added to the binder, please let me know in the comment section below some of the cards that you may have added to your collection over the last week. A couple of you have shared some amazing stories, and I really do appreciate that. Even ask some questions for what they should be collecting and everything. I'll be honest, I don't feel super comfortable giving a ton of advice on that regard, but I will do the best I can to respond to every comment, and hopefully we can collect together and have a lot of fun. Now, I don't want to waste too much time, so we are going to jump right in, guys. Let's see what we're adding to the binder this week. All right, guys, so uh, same as last week, what we're going to do is go through these in Wooburg order. And so we're starting off with white, and we actually just have one single white card this time. And it's not actually that great of a card. Uh, it's Master's Call, but it's the Wizards Play Network uh, promo. So this was actually released in 2011, I believe. I think it's only worth like 20 cents. It's not even worth that much. Uh, but I am a sucker for promos, as you guys know. And so this was some, one of those things that I just felt like, hey, I might as well pick it up. It's a beautiful card one of the things that i love this is kind of a, a something i've realized in doing this challenge is that you'll notice like the off axis background where everything is kind of tilted a little bit uh and that distorted like off off centering and whatever you want to call it uh that off center perspective is just something that i really love in artwork in general uh and so for a lot of the cards that we've seen especially a lot of the promos seem to have that and feature that and i really love that and so this was one that I really just picked up because I thought it was a pretty card. It's not that powerful. You create two little 1-1 one, one colorless mirror uh, creature tokens. That's it. But it's just a cool card. It's, uh, it's a little piece of history. I did finish up reading the original Mirrodin cycle uh not too long ago the novels for anybody that knows what i'm talking about uh and so the mirror were obviously prevalent during that cycle and it was actually really cool to to know their story and know what they are there for and uh it was it was interesting so this really played into that as well but truthfully i just love a good promo you guys know how it is so uh this is a cool addition very happy to have this one in the binder all right guys diving into blue we got a couple cards actually the first one being back to basics now this is a blast from the past this is all the way back from urza saga the original printing it did have a reprinting and i believe i have it pulled up here ultimate masters yes uh but i love the original artwork super iconic uh and just a really pretty card now, for those of you who don't know, this actually is a relevant card, I believe in like Legacy, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but it basically shuts down a lot of the dual lands, which is really, really important in that format because so many of the decks run them and so this really uh emphasizes the need for basics in the format this is part of the reason why you have to have something like that or some out for it uh it's also just a really interesting card it's not one that i tend to use like i'm not a big legacy player so this isn't a card that i intend to put into any decks or anything like that uh but i do love getting original printings of these very powerful cards i mean market price for this i believe is around 20 dollars. it'll we'll have the animation up of course but uh it actually is a relatively you know valuable not super valuable but it's got some value to it and i really like that uh and so this was really a card that i've always wanted to pick up mostly for that artwork and now we finally have it absolute blast of a card really stoked to have this in the binder next up we do have jace vrin's prodigy one of my favorite jace cards funny enough but i never picked it up i did open up a decent amount of magic origins not a ton but enough that i was hoping to pull one and i just never did uh and i really love this mostly for cube but this was such a cool point in magic's history so magic origins was a set basically a core set uh, that featured a number of planeswalkers showing off before they had their spark ignited. And then on the flip side, which we'll see here, 
you actually get to see them in their planeswalker form uh and it's really cool because essentially you met certain requirements and then got to flip it into its planeswalker version and so it kind of added a thematic play uh to the actual gameplay side of things where they're literally like igniting their spark in the middle of gameplay just a really cool thematic way of doing it uh jace vrin's prodigy i think is one of the better ones um i think in terms of value lily might be the the best i'm not 100 percent sure but jace is one of those that for cube and even for some different decks that i'd like to put together it's just a really helpful card it's a very good one you get to loot with it uh and then of course on the other end you get to do a lot of stuff as well so really awesome card really stoked to finally have this and again we're featuring that off axis it's funny how you realize things when you start doing these kinds of videos but the artwork being off kilter is just so cool to me uh and so i absolutely love this card super stoked to have this one next up we have this week's first uh i don't think last reserve list card uh and it's not a very good one <laughs> uh this is our last blue card this is marjan i believe i'm saying that correctly from homelands only about a dollar it's not a super prevalent card anything like that but it is reserve list it's absolutely hilarious to me honestly this isn't a card that has a lot of value like i said uh but when reserve list cards come up i tend to go ahead and pick them up just in case you never know i spend a dollar here it's fine if it goes up in value great if it doesn't it's cool this doesn't see play that i'm aware of anywhere uh, but it's just really interesting. It looks like just a big anglerfish. <laughs> uh, you can see it's got a really silly image of just a whale that it's about to eat, which I think is hilarious, uh, which is funny. This is so silly. I was watching uh, a the random tangent. I was watching a video the other day talking about anglerfish. I know I'm weird, but I like like Planet Earth documentaries. They're one of my favorites. Uh, I did. I thought they were much bigger than they are, and they are not that big. Uh, they're like maybe five inches or something like that big. Uh, so this is hilarious to me because it is very fitting. Um, <laughs> but all that to say, this is just one of those cards that because it's reserve list, I thought I'd pick it up. Uh, doesn't have a lot of use for me, uh, to be honest. It's not really a card that I even knew existed, but it's something that, you know, anytime a reserve list card pops up, I like to pick it up. It's not that you have to. I don't think it's worth investing in every single reserve list card, let me be clear. Uh, but I'm also not a financial person, so maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But it's a cool piece of magic, magic history regardless. Uh, and for that reason alone, it's a really cool card to have. Next up, we are jumping into our only black card of uh, today's deck. And look at this, guys. We have got Surgical Extraction. I absolutely love this. Uh, Surgical Extraction is a really cool card, really powerful card, mostly used in sideboards uh, in modern and maybe sometimes in legacy. But it features a lot of interesting things. One, it's an instant. Two, it is Phyrexian mana, which means you can pay it with basically just a couple points of life and you essentially get a free spell. Uh, but it's also very powerful. It removes a card from the graveyard and from the deck, the hand, everything. Uh, and you exile them, which is so crucial. It deals with certain things like Reanimator really well, all kinds of stuff. So this is a card that I've always loved. I do already own a Surgical Extraction, uh, but picking one up for the binder is certainly a cool one. Uh, this does have a little bit of value to it. I think sitting under like 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, again, animation will be there. But uh, truthfully, this is one of those scenarios where the artwork, despite not being uh, off kilter sp perspective, is just a really interesting piece of artwork. It's very morbid, I know, but like, look how freaking iconic that is. I mean, it's so symmetrical. It's just beautiful. I love it. Uh, and so for me, this is a really awesome pickup. A beautiful card. Definitely one I'm happy to have. Uh, and honestly, I would like a couple extra copies of this. This is a good card for a lot of different situations. Next up, we are jumping into red. And uh, we have another silly reserve list card. So Anzaren Ruins. Not a great card. I think value-wise, it's like two bucks. But it's another Homelands reserve list card. And honestly, can, can I just be very frank? Do you see this this little face here? That that's why I bought the card. <laughs> Look at that face. It's hilarious. Uh I love again picking up reserve list cards. There's not a lot to say there. It's just an interesting piece of magic history and therefore I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's pick it up. 
not a card I want to get multiples of. This, again, is not an investment type of card. If I was going to invest in reserve list, it would be something vastly different than this. However, uh, it is still a part of that, that reserve list, and it is still an important piece of the history. And so for me, it's always something that I'd like to pick up and just try out. Uh, it is an interesting card. Enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type, uh, and then creatures of that chosen type don't actually untap during their controller's untap steps, which I can think of some uses for that, but not really competitively viable. Uh, it's just an interesting card. That's really all there is to it. Next up, guys, we have got Stark of Wrath. Uh, interesting little card here. It's a 2-2 legend from uh, Tempest. Um, it's not, I don't think, super good, but it does hold a value of a couple bucks, which is kind of cool. You could tap it, destroy target artifact or creature, that permanence controller then gains control of Stark of Wrath, which I think is the interesting piece of this. It's a weird card. You don't see a lot of exchanging of permanence on the permanent itself. Uh, however, there have been a few that have come out. It's it's one of those that is just really unique and really cool. Uh, and so that's kind of why I picked it up. It's not a super valuable card. It's not even reserve list. It's just a cool old card. And so I thought, you know what? Let's pick one up. It's really cool, really beautiful card as well. Uh, and I love picking up old legends from some of these, like, not OG sets, because Tempest is certainly not original, but it certainly is an older set. And I love the old border of these. And so for me, it's just a cool piece of the history of magic that I wanted to pick up. We're here, we're seeing a lot of that this week because we've picked up a couple of reserve list things, but just a really cool card. Next up in our last red card of today's session, we have got Volcanic fallout uh really interesting card it's not super powerful it's very similar to pyroclasm i think it deals two damage to everything but it's one of these full art textless promos and i love these uh you guys know again i'm a sucker for some promos these are some of my favorites the original or the first uh the first iteration of this series actually for the binder challenge we had a foil wrath of god and this is one of those that kind of fits into that same vein. And so obviously not a lot of value here, but just a really unique card. Anytime these come up on the random picker, I usually pick these up just because they're cool. Sometimes I'll pick up more than one. In this case, I did only get the one, uh, but it's just a really cool card. I miss these kinds of promos. I wish they would do these more often, uh, but unfortunately they don't. And that's okay. But it's just a really cool, again, historic piece of magic. And uh, the, the textless full arts are always cool to pick up. All right, guys, moving into multicolored, we have another promo, Gaze of Granite. This is an IDW Comics promo. There are only a handful of these. I actually look this up. There's not that many of these IDW Comics uh, promos. I think there's like 70 something. Maybe I'm wrong. It's been a while since I looked that stat up, but this is actually one of the better ones. Destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost X or less. This is a nice little scalable threat uh, to or scalable sweeper, excuse me, to kind of deal with a lot of stuff. But again, it's a promo. I'm a sucker for promos. I love IDW versions. I think they're really pretty. Uh, this one's really cool because it does, I believe that's Dak Faden uh, in the back there, which is really cool, uh, or in the front, I should say. But uh, I do just love alternate artworks, and so this is one of those where I think it's just a cool card. Uh, I don't believe this has a ton of value. I didn't pull this one up, uh, but it might have a little. It's just one of the cooler things to pick up. Again, these IDW things are just unique. That's really all there is to it. All right, guys, our only artifact for the day is Soldevi Golem. This is another reserve list card. We've picked up three so far. Uh, that might be the last one. We'll see. Uh, this is just a cool card. Uh, it actually holds a little more value than the others. It's not super good, but it is like a $5 card. Uh, this is from Ice Age too. So uh, honestly, again, this is another piece of history. That's why I picked it up. It's reserve list. It's cool. Uh, but it also features some really cool art. I love the old school artwork of these kinds of cards. Again, you just don't get to see a lot of that nowadays. Hand drawn is really unique uh, for for cards that we get now, and so it's really pretty uh, to to get some of these awesome cards and these historic cards for the binder. It's actually an interesting one though. It doesn't untap during your untap step, and you can pay zero at the beginning of your upkeep, uh, and you can untap target tapped creature and opponent controls if you do you untap soul devi golem so just kind of interesting four mana five three not super good uh to be honest <laughs> Uh, but again, it's just cool. I, I love picking up old cards and that's where this one fits in. And that's the only reason I picked it up truthfully. 
All right, the last two cards, guys, are both lands, and we're starting off strong with a Mercadian Masks Dust Bowl. This is actually a pretty good card, so sitting a little under $20, I believe, at market value. Uh, you can tap it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, but importantly, you can pay three, tap it, sacrifice a land, it doesn't matter which land, and destroy target non-basic land. Uh, so between this and back to basics, we're just shutting down all the all the dual lands here. This is a really cool one, though, in my opinion. Uh, it's reusable wasteland, which is not something you see a lot of, uh, which is why I think this has held so much value. It's not it's it's a not a reserve list card. It's nothing too crazy. I think they did a expedition for it in Zendikar. Uh, which is pretty cool. It did also show up in a championship deck, which is awesome. But it's just a nice little Ponza piece for, for those old school players. And I really like that. Uh, the artwork is pretty interesting, in my opinion, too. It's very nice. Uh, you get the massive Dust Bowl behind just this like farmland area. Really interesting. Mercadian Mass, not known for... Well, in my opinion, it has some of the best art. I don't know that it was known for it, but I think it has some really pretty artwork in it. So this is just a cool card to pick up. It's not the most valuable card though we are adding the most valuable card in the next one all right guys so this is the most valuable card we have added to the binder thus far last week we put blood crypt in which was a big value push but today we are putting an original legends caracas now caracas is not reserve list this has been reprinted a number of times including eternal masters ultimate masters those kinds of things however it has not been reprinted with this original artwork in the old school frame and thus holding a value of market price i believe it's around 95 dollars something like that it's kind of insane this is a beautiful beautiful piece of magic history we don't get to see this version of it all that often the newer versions are good don't get me wrong but this is like double the price of the originals and that's insane to me uh this one does come with a good bit of edge wear and things like that and that's okay uh for me it's always been a card that i've wanted to pick up I really, really like this series for the sake of being able to justify uh, picking up some of car some of the cards like this uh, that I wouldn't normally just go out and buy. Uh, now, I did not pay full price for this. I was able, because of the edge wear and things like that, to get it a bit cheaper. Uh, and so, you know, that's market price. That's not necessarily what you're going to find it for, but it is just a super, super unique card. Amazing, amazing artwork uh, by Nicola here, Nicola here. And uh, man, I just love this card. This actually does have quite a number of uses uh, in Legacy and Vintage as well, which is awesome. Even in Command... Uh, no, it's Band and Commander, excuse me. Uh, but it's just a really powerful card. I love this. Uh, and yeah, honestly, I, I'm so stoked to be able to add this to the binder. That puts a lot of value in there as well, which we'll see in just a second. All right, guys. So that is this week's 12 new cards that have been added to the binder. We'll have the full value as well as the binder completion up on the screen for you guys so you can keep track. Feel free, again, share your stories. I want to hear what kinds of cards you guys are collecting, what kinds of things you've picked up this week, maybe for a deck, maybe for your binder, whatever it might be. I want to hear about it. I am so excited for this series. Again, this is such a nice, close close to my heart kind of thing. I don't get to do this all that often. So this is a nice excuse to. Uh, and again, you guys have been really supportive of the series. So thank you so much. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Feel free to leave a like, a comment down below. And do not forget to subscribe. We do have a giveaway going on right now that that does enter you to win. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you later.